Yeah, it, it, it's great. I love DC, of course. Uh, been in DC my whole life, but you know, it was great today. Uh, I had a real good group. We really competed. Uh, I felt like I showed them, you know, exactly what I can do. And what have you been working on since the end of uh, your season with the Hoyas? Uh, just pretty much everything. Uh, making sure I, you know, keep my jump shooting abilities there. Uh, finishing around the rim and, you know, handling the ball, but pretty much everything, tightening up on everything. Chase. Hey, man, just what has this uh, pre-draft workout process been like for you? Um, you know, do you have other workouts scheduled and just what is kind of the travel like and just your schedule like right now? Uh, it's pretty tough, not only for me, but, you know, for anyone going through this process, uh, you know, I've been flying all around, uh, you know, getting to do exactly what I love. So it's not really tough. Uh, once I get to where I'm going and I get into the gym, then everything else is fine. Bobby. Hey, Jamarco. Um, you've been one of the most versatile players in the Big East the last couple of years. Um, where do you see yourself fitting in on this level, and what have, what have teams been telling you? Uh, I mean, I, I feel like uh, that I could pretty much fit in everywhere. At Georgetown, I play everything besides point guard. Um, so, you know, I think I could play some two, some three, some four. But I think my versatility is what, you know, could help me get to the NBA and stay in the NBA because, you know, the game is changing uh, to favor, you know, guys like me. Bigger wings that, you know, could play inside and out, shoot the ball and play defense. And then, you know, as far as um, since the end of the season, um, how much have you consulted with with Patrick during, during this whole process? Uh, you know, he's been a, a, a huge help for me. Not only through this process, but you know, at Georgetown also. Not only off the court, not only on the court, but off the court. Um, you know, since I first stepped foot on campus, he always instilled that mindset of always being a pro. Um, that's why I know that this this process right now for me is a lot easy because you know I was kind of prepared for it. Thank you, Cardell. What's going on, Jamarco? Um, First off, uh, being a local product out the Washington DC area, what does it mean to be in a pre-draft workout for the hometown NBA team? Man, this means the world to me. Uh, you know, I do everything I do for, at first off my family and then secondly, my community. Coming from public school, you know, doing a postgraduate year, but you know, from public school to Georgetown to here, man, this, this, this is huge for me. Showing, you know, all the kids, you know, in this area, uh, even not in this area that, you know, no matter where you come from, you can, you can, if you dream it, you can do it. And uh, just to piggyback off that, you know, it's a, to me, unfair stigma associated with four year players. Um, you know, with some people where they feel as if you're not a one and done underclassman, you know, declaring for the draft, you're not, you know, uh, you don't have a high selling. Um, you know, watch you grow over the years from Eastern High School, DC premier days, and, and throughout Georgetown. You know, even though you're a four-year guy, I feel you have a high ceiling due to your size, skill, and versatility. But what are your thoughts on that four-year player uh, stigma? And do you feel being a four-year player gives you an advantage in this pre-draft process? Uh, I only know about Jamarco Pickett and Jamarco Pickett only. Uh, I feel like my four years at Georgetown really polished me to, you know, become, you know, the, the man and the player that I am now. Uh, I definitely feel like it gives me an advantage over, you know, the, the next player uh, in his draft. Um, not only just being a four-year player, but, you know, playing under a, a, you know, NBA superstar for, you know, the last four years of my career. Um, you know, we, everything we did was, you know, directly from the NBA. So I feel like that alone um, gives me the, the advantage over a lot of people. But again, I only know about Jamarco Pickett and Jamarco Pickett only. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Ava. Marco, you guys had um, such a good postseason run this past season that really got everybody excited in this area. What was that uh, like for your development, just seeing that kind of level of competition day after day in the Big East tournament and, and going to the NCAAs and everything like that? How big was that for you? Man, I went out with a bang. Uh, you know, winning the Big East tournament was, you know, a huge accomplishment for, you know, not only me, but, you know, the program at Georgetown. Uh, I feel like going into the Big East tournament, uh, Coach Crouch instilled in us. He, he had to scout for the first game. And, you know, his, his, his 
main message was believe. And I felt like we went into that thing believing and, you know, we did exactly what we come to do, which is win. So it was, it was huge for me. If you could just tell us uh, how today went for you, how, how'd the workout go? Oh, uh, the workout was good. Um, it definitely was a lot of competition in the air. Um, guys getting after it. So, um, you know, the, the staff just wanted to see, you know, who can compete, you know, at a high level through fatigue. So, you know, guys out here just giving it they all. And um, I saw in your college bio that uh, you consider LeBron James to be a role model. Um, and not just as a player, but kind of the example he sets for the youth. Um, could could you kind of expand on that and, and what he means to you when you look up to him? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, really, uh, he means a lot, you know. Um, you know, because Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan back in the day, you know, he was the guy. But as far as like different, you know, different um, different topics, you know, social justice, you know, stuff like that. He wasn't really big on that. And I feel like LeBron is like the 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 main guy, you know, the he's pretty much in the forefront in the headlines for, you know, for just sticking up for just those rights. So I think that's that's really big in today's society, you know, as far as with social media goes, you know, and he's a big figure, you know, out here. So that that's definitely a big, a big plus for me. Mike Ashley. Um, <clears throat> thanks. Hey, Troy, uh, I, I'm from Baltimore Press Box. I talked to you earlier this year. Uh, tell me what it's like. I mean, you've had such a long journey through college to to get here. I mean, what what's this moment like for you? Uh, uh, really just a, just a, a sign of, uh, just fresh air, man. Uh, I've been through a lot, you know, with, you know, with, uh, college and, you know, the, now that I'm here, you know, I'm just, I'm just proud of myself that I didn't uh, give up, you know, um, cause it's been a lot of times where, you know, I could have easily gave up and gave up my dream and just could have been average, you know, but. I didn't settle for just for me being average, you know, uh, you know, now I have somebody to take care of. I have a daughter now. So that pretty much put me in another, another men, uh, mental mentality. You know, I just had to, I just had to just realize that it's, it's not about me no more. You know, I'm the provider now, so I got to do what I got to do. Just not as a basketball player, not as a person, but as a father, stuff like that. So, you know, I just commend myself on just not giving up. How many how many team workouts have you had? I know Celtics, Nets, uh, Wizards. So uh, this would be my third one right now. Uh, okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Friday. I have a workout for the Knicks, and that'll be my fourth one. Mm -hmm. uh, what 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 kind of feedback are you getting? Where where do you fit in the NBA? What what are people looking for from you? You know, I feel like I'm the typical, uh, you know, three and D guy. Um, you know, um, I'm definitely a freak athlete. You know, with the jump shot and 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 can definitely play lock up defense. Um, I just feel like you know any team that has me, I can I can bring an immediate you know impact. You know, I'm an older guy, so I I definitely you know I I have a a ton of just knowledge about the game. You know, I've been in college for four years, so I just have a lot to just give to the game. And then even, you know, coming in as a rookie, I can, you know, talk to some of the the, the the other rookies that's that's along with me as well. You know, not just about just basketball, but just like period, you know, they can easily talk to me. I can help them out as well. So I can be a, a positive impact on any team. Anthony Tark tells me that you guys talk. I know he's in the same boat. He says you've given him good advice. What kind of things have you told him? Um, you know, I just tell them things, you know, just about, you know, confidence wise, you know, as long as your confidence is high, uh, you know, you won't even worry about getting frustrated about, you know, missing shots or anything, you know, just as long as you're confident and just knowing that you are, you can knock that shot down, you're just a good player, you know, confidence, you know, beats anything, you know, uh, he's a, he's a hell of a player, you know, me and him had some battles in the MEAC game. And, and, you know, uh, he definitely deserved that, you know, player of the year because he did a lot of things for his his uh, his team, you know, that I just like, you know, his, he's definitely one of the best players I played against, you know, really all throughout my uh, college career. So I definitely okay. give him that. Has this been a fun process, what you're in right now? I mean, are you enjoying it? 
Oh, definitely. Uh, I'm just taking every uh, every day, you know, um, day by day. I'm learning new stuff every day. You know, um, it's definitely exciting. It's um, uh, it does get in, it does get you know a big taxing as far as you know with the traveling and everything. But you know, lucky for me, I love to travel. I like to see different parts of the country. So you know, it's pretty much a, a win win for me. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Best of luck. Thank you, Fred. Hey Troy, how you doing? Um, doing good. I was I was just curious. What what was the workout like today? What do they have you doing? Who do they have you working with? So we pretty much did a lot of uh, competition shooting, um, but mainly it was um, really just uh, competitive one on one drills, two on two. You know, just showing what guys. You know, just showing where they what is there. You know. Uh, what they like to compete at, you know, what just get a good feel for them. You know, they want guys to compete, you know, I, you know, and two of my favorite players play for the Wizards, you know, Bill and, and, and Westbrook. And, and, and those two are just relentless as far as how they play. So I can just imagine how they play on, I mean, I'm sorry, not play, but you know, what's the everyday practice, you know, look like for them. So I think they just wanted to see that, you know, from us as well. And, and they're obviously looking for a head coach right now, and they're going through workouts without without a head coach. Who, who, how are they, is that something that comes through when you're going through workouts? How exactly are they organizing that from your perspective? Oh, no, I'm not thinking about that at all. You know, I'm just, I'm just worried about, you know, just showing the front, you know, just really just showing the, you know, the front office, you know, what I can do and what I can bring to the table. You know, once they make that decision and, you know, Hopefully, you know, I'm here to, you know, be on the team. Then I'll worry about all that later. But I, I'm not worried about, you know, who, who who are their choices and stuff like that. I'm just out here playing. Thanks, Troy. All right, last question, Neil. Hey, Troy, I'm just curious, how did this workout, especially with it being a two-on-two -two workout, differ compared to some of your other ones? And was there anything, you know, particularly that the Wizards ones stood out you know, whether it was a lot more conditioning compared to other things or something along those lines? Uh, I would say this, the Celtics, this workout and the Celtics wor workout was pretty much the same. Um, I, I would say on the two-on-two -two, um, drill that we did, you know, it, we, we really had to pay attention to, you know, the small details. Uh, and it wasn't just like, oh, okay, we just play two-on-two -two and just go, go out and play. You know, we had to really pay attention to, certain steps and everything was was game pace fast pace so you know guys was out there getting fatigued and they just wanted to see you know who can think you know why they're tired and you know can just play you know why they're fatigued you know um so i think that's what they wanted to see being a local product out of fresh murder what does it mean for you to be working out for the hometown nba team oh man this is big this is huge uh, this is honestly a dream come true you know, you watch, you watch the, you watch the Washington Wizards on TV all the time, um, and just being a local guy, being around the area, you know, you drive across the arena, or around the arena and stuff. Man, this is big. Like I said, it's a dream come true, and I'm just enjoying every moment of it, man. I get that. Um, your college head coach, Pastor Cat, um, who's an assistant at Northwestern and Boston College, has a long history of developing sleepers coming out of, you know, high school into all conference, all American college players, you know, yourself, you know, Troy Burrell, Craig Smith, Jared Dudley, Tyrese Rice, it, it, the list goes on and on, even Reggie Jackson. Uh, talk about his impact on you as a player on and off the court and how has he prepared you for this moment? Yeah, man, Coach Duquette um, was big, big for my career, had a big impact. Uh, he developed my IQ, uh, got me, he gave me confidence. He believed in me and made me the player I am today. Honestly, uh, I wouldn't be here without without Coach Duke and the rest of the coaching staff. Uh, they was the only school to offer me, and they opened doors for me. So now, I'm, now I'm working out in front of the Wizards now. So uh, I appreciate everything Coach Duke did for me, man. I appreciate all of them, the whole coaching staff. I wouldn't be here without them. And my last question for you: um, Coming out of high school, you was fresh. County Player of the Year, like you just said, your only scholarship offer was UMass Lowell. Uh, what advice would you give to 
you know, local products that's coming up similar to you has a similar path that are frustrated with the recruiting process, feel like they're being overlooked. Um, what, what advice would you give to them, seeing as how far you came and where you had knocking on the door being an NBA player? Um, just to keep working and um, and just to keep believing and always stay ready. Uh, I had no, like, I, like you said, I had no offers coming out of high school. I, I could have just been like, oh, my career is over um, and just, you know, give up. But I stuck with it. I just stayed ready and I kept playing. And if you keep working, somebody going to find you. And that's just the story of Obi, you know. And I just want every kid who's watching me back home just to keep believing and that anything is possible. If I can do it, anybody can.